but it was running back Vic Ballard who supplied the great finish. To put it in perspective, he dove into the end zone from the five yard line. The first face the Colts saw when they walked into the locker room after today's win over the Lions was head coach Chuck Pagano. Hilton becoming the first player in franchise history to record a punt return for a touchdown and a receiving touchdown in the same game. This team and the ability to fight back every week. It's something that Coach Pagano is doing at home and it's something you guys want to do on the field too, isn't it? Yeah, you know, um, and you know, we have it going, you know, Chuck Strong and Coach Strong. The newest member of the Indianapolis Colts, Ahmad Bradshaw, in attendance for the open practice at Lucas Oil Stadium. He signed a contract just yesterday. The Colts running game taking another hit. A day after placing Donald Brown on injured reserve, the team announcing Delon Carter will miss the next two to three weeks with an ankle injury. The Indianapolis Colts are on summer break. The team wrapped up mini camp this afternoon. Players and coaches will go their separate ways until training camp begins at the end of July. It was a lighthearted conclusion to off-season workouts. Even head coach Chuck Pagano was tossing around the football. The organization did all they can. Now the rest is up to the players. Pagano made sure to stress to the team how important staying in football shape is. Training camp is not the place to begin working on the 2013 season. The players, they're on the same page. Nothing changes for me. You know, I'm still working out at 5.30 in the morning um, up until training camp. You know, um, if anything, it's, for me, it, it gets turned up a little bit more. I don't have a, the, the, the bones of a 24-year-old. I can't, I can't sit down too long. Every once in a while, I take a peek at the playbook, so when they get back to camp, even though we're going to have installs, you're not starting at ground zero. You already uh, built your foundation. Keep your foundation strong. That way, when we get to training camp, we go through the installs. It's just, you know, like, like week three and four. Some Colts made sure to stay active even tonight, all for a good cause. The fifth annual Caroline Sims Memorial Celebrity Softball Challenge went down at Victory Field. The event put on in part by linebacker Robert Mathis and Pacers center Roy Hibbert. Colts quarterback Andrew Luck getting in on the fun this year. Luck up to bat here and he's going deep. Hold up. Luck gets intercepted. Flies out to Pacers guard George Hill. Our own Chris Hagen now at the plate showing no, everybody he did not that he's got some oh. game. Bases loaded, wow. RBI single. Go Chris that. Hagen. He's that. an athlete, at apparently. Like the real winners tonight, though, guys, are the kids. All proceeds benefit the Indiana Children's Wish Fund. Um, it, 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 it puts a smile on, on the child's face. Uh, they, they already go through a lot, you know, being dealt a, uh, kind of a short hand. And so come out, have fun, give them something to smile about, let them, and let them enjoy themselves. What a great event. Meanwhile, the brain trust of the Pacers organization watched their first pre-draft workout of the offseason today. The team worked out six prospects, including Fort Wayne's Deshaun Thomas. General Manager Kevin Pritchard knows there are things to address in the draft if they want to get past the powerhouse in the East, Miami. When you go as far as playing Miami in the Eastern Conference Finals, you look at it and you say, if we could have made a few more shots, um, if we could have had a few more players get into the paint, uh, playmakers. And uh, so I think those are a couple areas we'll look at. But it does get specific in who you're playing and how you can beat them, that's for sure. And finally tonight, the Indiana Fever, a day away from meeting President Barack Obama. They were supposed to head for the nation's capital this afternoon, but bad weather in D.C. left them grounded. The reigning WNBA champs are flying out tomorrow instead. Brian, hopefully Much there's better. clear weather. Much yes, better weather we for do them hope tomorrow. they make it to the Opportunity of a lifetime. Joined by Bruce Arians, the new head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, also the former offensive coordinator for the Indianapolis Colts. Has to be strange to be back here in India, isn't it? It really was weird coming into the stadium. Uh, so many emotions uh, and, and memories from last year, and um, great ones, great relationships, and uh, it was very hard leaving. The lessons that you learned last season, everything that the team went through, is that something that you're going to be using for the rest of your life? I think it, it helps. You know, anytime you add an experience level uh, of what we went through, uh, hopefully I never have to go through that one again. Uh, uh, you know, the whole the whole year was all about one thing, and that's seeing Chuck get well. Uh, and then all the lessons learned along the way, hopefully they'll help you down the road.
Was it hard to say goodbye, though, to the folks here in India? I mean, you established such a, a great relationship in such a short amount of time. Yeah, it was, it was one of those things. It had to be what I felt like the perfect fit for me to leave. I wasn't going to be a head coach just to be one. Uh, I had probably the best job in the NFL and um, fantastic fans, and, and everybody treated us so great. The bonds that you created with the head coach, with Chuck Pagano, with the general manager, Ryan Grigson, when you hear it here at the Combine, there's so much love for you. Is that something that will never be broken, no matter if you guys play against each other or not? Yeah, they can't take that away. Uh, what we did as a group, as an organization, uh, was unbelievable. I, and I, I said it, uh, I got an individual award that didn't really belong to me. It belonged to everybody, from Mr. Ursay, Ryan Grigson, Chuck, all the players, the veteran players especially, who I leaned on all the time. Um, so it, it, was, um, it was extremely hard to leave. Taking over on an interim basis, you're 9-3 and three in, in Indy. How much did that prepare you for this moment now as a first-time head coach in the NFL? Well, I, it told me I could do it. You know, I, there's two things. I found out I could call plays and be a head coach. It's something I always wanted to do. And uh, in a situation that was a little tougher than when you have six months to prepare for it. So I, I feel real comfortable, in, uh, especially having Tom Moore with me now, uh, who I can lean on when I need him. Harold Goodwin, who everybody knows is, is a great young coach. He's going to be a head coach someday. So I, I think those things offensively made it extremely easy for me to be uh, to do my job, and uh, I leaned on our guys. Clyde did a great job last year. I leaned on him a ton, and and Greg Minuski. I mean, I can't say enough about the job that, that Greg did last year. Is it going to be hard to get away from the play calling duties, or are you going to still be doing some of that in Arizona? I'm going to call everyone until I find somebody that I feel I can do it better, and I won't look over his shoulder. You know, I don't want to look over anybody's shoulder, and uh, that, that's going to be the hardest thing for me to ever give up. A franchise quarterback was cemented here here in Indy with Andrew Luck. Not the same situation in Arizona. What are you going to do with the quarterback position? Well, we're going to we're going to take what we have and make them better, and then keep exhausting door number two and see who's behind, see who's behind door number two. And if that's a better option for the Cardinals, we'll go that way. Lastly, how many Kangos do you have in the closet? About twenty. <laughs> I'm saving my blue one. <laughs> yeah, keep that one. That's a good memory. Yes, indeed. The Colts fighting back in this game, just like head coach Chuck Pagano is doing in the hospital against leukemia. And it was the player that knows Chuck Pagano the longest that mounted this comeback, Reggie Wayne, who played at Miami. While Pagano was an assistant coach, Wayne had the best game of his NFL career with 212 receiving yards. Been knowing Chuck for a long time, 16 years, man. And um, great human being, great coach, great personality. Great husband, um, everything, you know, he, he identifies the word great. And uh, to come out and, and just do it for him. Um, <clears throat> I just, I, I said to myself, I was going to lay it all on the line. And we had to follow his lead. That's the bottom line. He came to play and we had to come to play too. Everybody knows what this game meant to Reg. And, uh, and he brought his A game. Wednesday, I challenged our five-star players. And our five-star players showed up. Support for Chuck Pagano was everywhere. The end zone to the stands on the back of Blue's jersey, CP stickers plastered in the team's locker room, and his name, even a part of a fashion statement by Packers players pregame. Reggie Wayne upped it a notch, wearing an orange mouth guard and gloves, the color meant to bring awareness to leukemia, and it's something Wayne could technically get fined for by the NFL. I really feel like that would be a terrible thing to do, to find me, you know, with, all, you know, with everything that's been going on, but so be it. I'll take that fine and, um, and go out there and do it for Chuck. Lucas Oil Stadium was showered in pink today for breast cancer awareness. For the Colts' next home game against Cleveland on October 21st, they hope to incorporate orange for leukemia awareness. At Lucas Oil Stadium, Brittany Deal, Fox 59 Sports.